let's get started. Uh, we're going to talk about kickoff return. And uh, here's how we're going to go about this today. I'm going to talk to you about some basic fundamentals and techniques. We may end up pushing the chairs out of the way a little bit. I think get involved and, and walk through some things. I think you'll have a better understanding if you actually do it. But let me st get started with this. Kickoff return. The number one goal of kickoff return is when the play is over, our offense goes out on the field. You can't have a turnover, can't have a penalty, back your offense up in a bad situation. That's the first starting point from that. The other thing, you have to understand this, the guys on kickoff are good players. They're out there for a reason. You cannot sustain blocks for a long period of time. Kickoff return is about angles and timing. I used to, uh, used to talk about the geography of it. You cannot sustain blocks. You'll see film where the angle in which people go and I know it's going to be hard to understand, but it's okay to miss a block. You have to force them to go where you want them to go. The returner has to hit it full speed. Things have to happen like that. The kick out blocks, the angles that you hit it, and you got to hit seams. That's the important, the most important thing about kickoff return. The return itself, the scheme itself, there's a variety of schemes. They all work if executed. The one we're going to show is the basic and how we explain to our players we're all in the same, talking the same language. When we talk about returns, if there is a return that we have that hits in between the hashes, we call it a shoot. That's a shoot return. If we have a return that hits between the hash and the numbers, we call it alley. That's the alley area. And outside the numbers are sideline. When I was a high school coach, we would run at the lowest level of football. We ran sideline return. Open the season with a 90-yard kickoff return, sideline, it's simple, it's basic, it's the execution of the techniques that we use. That is critical. The numbers that you see are identification. If we are all on the kickoff return team, we're all on, on kickoff return, we're staring at the kickoff team over here. We start our count to our left, everything is uh, uh, to us, L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, R5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, so if we say you two are doubling R4, you know who we're talking about. If I say you're trapping R5, you know who we're talking about. So we have that built into the system of, of just getting everybody on the same page. This return is the basic return that we used in the NFL in college. This is, this is the starting point. We were fortunate enough, uh, when I was in the NFL, everything's about the return. We had a guy named Josh Cribbs, you may have never heard of him. In 2007, he led the NFL, averaged over 30 yards of kickoff return. This was our return. And it wasn't because of the return, and it surely wasn't because I was coaching it. It was because of the return. That concept up there is basically, you guys are offensive coaches, so this will trigger something. That's a power play. That's a double team trap, double team kick out. That, that's a basic offensive play right there on the board. To the right, the right guard, right tackle, and the right center. You see there's a double team taking place between the right center and the right guard. And that is on number four. This is called right, going to our right, alley, in the alley area, gas. Those two people, we just came up with the term gas because they had a G in it. The center and the guard are doubling, and that tackle traps the first person on the other side of the double, double team. This is timing. This has to take place in a sequence. The double team takes place at the 35. The right tackle comes down and hides behind the double team. If these two are double teaming somebody, I'm coming down and I'm right behind them. And it's first color that I see, I go and block that color. We should get the double team takes place in this manner. We have what's called a post and a pin. And if you're coming down the field and I'm, you're, I'm posting you, I want to just get in front. Post. The pin guy comes from the side. In the U.S., we can't do double teams like this anymore, and I assume that's the rule here. you got to have one guy hit, and then the other guy comes. You can't go and, and blast the guy like that anymore. So the post guy, all he's trying to do is absorb this guy coming down. Just get in front of him. Get your hands on him, and then this guy comes over, and all, it's a position block. It's not a... We're not trying to kill anybody, we just want to close him off and pin him. Now, you'll see on tape that trap block, he's going to come by, sometimes that guy doesn't see him, and that can be a, a little bit of a, a good collision there. 
Yeah, you're knocking the crap out of them. And that guy's coming over there and hitting that five. Now, the, there are certain people on special teams that have you have to have good players at certain positions. We use backups at that right guard and right tackle. Those are backup players. They are not starters. They are backups. That right tackle block has to be a physical type of kid. He doesn't have to be a starter. He's got to be a tough guy. The left center has to be a talented athlete. That is the you got to have a guy that can move and block in space. He needs to be a good player. That's a difficult block. The left center has got to come down, set up at the 30-yard line, and he's going to block that five, and I'll go over the technique. I'm going to, I'm going to start demonstrating here because I, I, I'm sure I can demonstrate better than I can talk. Come on up. I told you we are going to use these guys, get these guys working here. He's coming down. He's a good football player. This is a good player. He's that five. He's coming down the field. And I'm over here, and I'm turning, and I flip my hips, and I'm in this position. And he is playing and I'm running right by me. All I want to do, it's called absorb and redirect. Absorb and redirect. Go on, start again. As I get down, he's coming. I just want to absorb him. He's trying to get around me. I just want to get my hands out and just move my feet and absorb him and take him, thank you, where we want him to go. That's the whole key. Take him where we want him to go. Not He's trying to go to the ball. We just want to shield him, as in the diagram there, and make him go away from the return. The left guard, he's going back and using the same technique. It's called absorb and redirect. The left tackle, that is an easy block. Because that player on offense, and I, as I talk to people in the question, you need to know what are the responsibility of the people that are covering? What are they being coached to do? They have responsibilities. You just can't run down the field and do whatever you want. That number three is supposed to stay outside. So that block by that left tackle is not that hard. That's not a starter. That's a guy that we have that's a backup over there. He's just absorbing and turning him. The other key players in this is the up back in the middle. He is critical. Him and the off returner. And, and I kid, uh, when I coach this all the time, there's two really smart guys on the field. The up back and the returner, the off returner. They have to make decisions. They are like that personal protector on the punt. They got to be smart. We had the up back when I was in the NFL was a, a Duke graduate. I don't know if you know much about American college, but Duke, very, very good school. The off returner was from North, uh, Northwestern University. Very, very academic, very academic place. Very smart guys. Not overly talented. Uh, backups. One was a backup guard, and the off returner was a backup third team running back. He was in the NFL because he was, did this well. But we did this in college. It's the same in college. We did Division II. We do the same thing. We do the exact same thing. All right, now that up back is going to set the return in front of the returner. And this is difficult. It, it takes a smart, somewhat athletic guy to do. The ball's kicked. We're running right return. Our returner, uh, come on, you look like a returner. Come on over here. Jump in here. You got the ball. Don't get tackled. Come on over there. All right, he's got the ball. I'm going to set up the wedge 10 to 12 yards in front of him. So back up, back up. Don't go anywhere. Stay over there. Come on. Oh, yeah. All right, now I'm setting up right here. Boom. I'm right here. 10 to 12 yards. I'm right here, and I'm going to block to the right. And I'm waiting for the off returner to say go. He makes a go call when he catches it. He says go, and then here we go. I'm going this way, and you follow me. This guy is going to follow and run off this hip of that off return. He's got one decision. He runs off this, and then he can run wherever he wants after that. But that's where, how we're blocking the play. It's like you're a tailback, and I'm a fullback. You got all you guys on offense. And the offense is kicking out blocking, and he's going to run right up inside. That's the exact same concept. Thank you. Exact same concept that this play is. And it just so happened that our returner was had running back skills, and he understood that completely. So the up returner goes back and sets the wedge. That right end, we're not allowed, like you are not allowed, to get right next to each other in the wedge. So there has to be separation. He gets back next to the, uh, uh, help me out here, be the, please help out. Thank you, sir. Now he's the up back, and he's set up 10 to 12 yards in front of the returner, and I'm just right in, and I come over this way, and we're going this way, we get like about this close. And then we hear go, 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 and then here we go. We're going this way, we kick out blocking this way. We can't get next to each other because it's illegal, but the angle, thank you, the angle is critical, as you'll see on video in a second. 
And I, I, I told these guys, I've been telling them this for a long time, you can miss a block. But as we go inside and out, you cannot cross my face. You have to go over here. And that, I think, when people don't feel like, oh, God, i got to get this block, i got to get this block, they fly at those guys. Oh, wait a second, I'm going to set up, and I can go block him, and if I miss him, it's okay? <sighs> Come on, let's go. I mean, they're, just, they're screaming at those guys, which is what you want. Because if you've ever had the ball in your hand, and you're running with it, and the guys in front of you are not running with you, it's not a lot of fun. When it's go, it's, it's time to go. You go, you can miss it, but you're going. And that guy with the ball in the hand, he can then run full speed at the inside hip. He has confidence that they're all going fast, and he can go fast too. Therefore, he hits the seam, and then he's on his own. Once, once he makes that cut, never say a word to where he goes. It's his decision. If you want to cut it back to the left and get the crap knocked out of you, that's up to you. You want to go out to the right and run for a touchdown? That's what I would suggest, but do whatever you feel like doing. The off-returner. That returner is over here going to his right. The off-returner is splitting the difference between the up-back and the returner. He's at six, seven yards right here. And his job is to make sure the ball's caught and not dropped. He looks for the back side two. You'll notice that the two up there and the one are not blocked. He secures the back side two, and then he yells go, and him and the, and the wedge and the left end and the right end, they all haul tail that way. They're going as fast as they can go. All right? The other guy that needs to have athleticism. I didn't say the off-returner has to be athletic. He just needs to be smart. The up-back doesn't need to be athletic. He needs to be smart. That left end needs to be a darn good athlete. The best big athlete that you can put out there, a fullback, a tight end, someone who's accustomed to blocking that understands it, a big running back. Because, I'll show you in a minute, they'll start kicking on him the ball once you start breaking returns on him. He has to go from that side, run, get in relationship with the uh, up, up back, and then sprint over here and make a block in space. Not easy. It's not easy. He has a technique. Uh, sir, could you help me out and just jump up there? Right there is good. He has to have in space, as he's coming down full speed, he's got to come down and he's, he just widens his base, taps his feet, and he wants him to go that way. It's okay if this guy runs him over. It's okay. What he can't let happen is he comes down and then you go inside him. That cannot happen. That cannot happen. And that guy has to know that. He has to understand that. He has to get that ingrained in his mind because that guy will make the play every single time. You cannot let that happen. So that's how that guy is taught. And that's, that, that's a base return. They've been doing, we've been doing that return in the States for a long, long, long time. You can do it to the right, you can do it to the left. But that's, that's a good, solid, sound base return. Again, the key, athletic people, left, the center and that left end. The smart people, the off-returner and the up-back. The right end needs to be a little bit uh, of a thicker uh, type of body. Doesn't have to be great, but he's got to have some strength to take on a guy coming down and kick him out. Uh, but that's the type of people you want on the returner. There's all kinds of good returners, big ones, small ones in between. Some people will hit it. Some people, you can coach them all day. They won't hit it. you got to hit it. you got to go and attack that return. Coach, yes, sir. Does that mean you will align? You will flip those guys if you want to run it the other way? We have done that. Uh, in high school, we did that because the high school kids, you only wanted to ask a few things of them. Uh, at small colleges, they do that. Now, in the NFL, we didn't do that because they immediately know what you're doing. But uh, people do that, and then you're teaching the same thing all the time. And now from the coaching standpoint of this, we would have a coach coach the right side, the right, uh, right center, right guard, right tackle. We would have a guy coach the left center, left guard, left tackle. We would have, well, I did the rest. So, but the back end, because I knew what I wanted done, uh, I would do the rest. But there's a guy teaching the double team track. There's a guy teaching that absorb and redirect. And the way you can do this and make it go quickly, and for the kids to absorb it quickly, is set up the drills. You'll have one, two, three, and four, uh, and five. Go, we go half, half the thing at a time. You don't want to run these guys in the ground. They'll come jogging down. The right side will go, double team, trap. Okay, they're done. Other side is up. I would just have two, three, four, and five. Go back, absorb. 
redirect, that side's done. And then to get the wedge, I would send one, two, and three down, and four, and have those, the timing and the kick out. It's all, it's, it's not this, it's not. It's not, it's absorb and turn them. Turn them, just turn them. And if you miss them, make them go where we want them to go. And returner, if you hesitate, you're gonna be, they're gonna, you're gonna get hit. And you're gonna get hit pretty good. So take it up in there. Take it up to the point and then make your cut and do whatever you want. So that's kind of the, the you know, that is, it's what we made a living on, what I made a living on for quite a while. All right, now the drills. You'll see this right here, just what I talked about. You see the center and the, and the tackle? It could be a center tackle, center guard. Any two people can double team. Any two people. You teach that in a drill. This is a position block. We don't need a big hit. Pin man, secure the block. If defender fights one way, you go and take somebody else. Up at the top, establish and maintain targets. So, you, know, you know, targets are, are the, the stern, the inside. Uh, it's set up on straight lines. If, the ball, if you're all on the kickoff team, everybody here is kicking off. You're, you're, it's covering the field. And the ball's kicked over there, where are you gonna run? You're all gonna run that way. Common sense. So if I'm one of the guys who gotta do a cutoff block, I'm turning and going this direction, and I'm flipping my hips and getting ready for you to come this way. Common sense. If the ball's kicked over there, you guys, you better run to the ball. That's what a kickoff team does. Come on over here and set up. The angle of the kick determines the angle of the drop of the front line players. The angle of the kick determines the angle of the drop of the front line players, not the back line guys. And that's a little hard. That's, that, that's, for some reason, that concept is one of the harder things to teach young people. Back line, alley, double team, number four, up back, set the wedge, attack inside out. Attack the targets inside out, set the wedge 12 to 13 yards, just like I went over. Now, the other thing. If you're running down the field, all you guys are coming down at our wedge. You're all coming down, you're coming down fast and hard. And if their shoulders are down, meaning if they're running and they're down here, they're going to come and go right through me. But if they're running and their head and shoulders are up, why are their head and shoulders up? They're going to hit fake and try to go across your face. you got to know that when you're in the wedge. you got to know that. There are certain guys that try to run you over, and there are certain guys that are going to try to head fake and go around. Know that before the game starts. As a coach, you can help your guys. Hey, watch out for 22. He's going to head fake and go inside. 34, never goes inside. Just go inside out, you'll be fine. So those things are something that you can do to help. There's the absorb and redirect. Absorb them and redirect. The only time you strike and redirect uh, is sometimes in the NFL, they'll send a 270-pound guy down the field. Why, I don't know. They'll send a big, thick guy come running right down at your wedge. That's a strike and redirect, not an absorb, because if you absorb, it'll just run you right into the play. So it just depends on the size of the guy that you're blocking. Rarely does that happen anymore. That happened a, few, a number of years ago. Uh, the Bears used to do that. But uh, there's the double team. You see the one on the top left we can't do anymore. The one on the top right is the one we use. Post and pin, double team. Went over that already. I want to make sure we get a chance to go. The wedge blocking, the angle in which you go is critical. You'll see it in a minute on the video. It's the angle. You, you've got to take the right angle inside out. If you do that, you give yourself a chance. And when you don't, you end up in trouble. All right, here it is. Uh, I don't know how to make this go back. I'll try to do the best I can. Now, the one thing that I see just immediately is the kicker just made the tackle, didn't he? That should never happen. That's a starting point. That's just ridiculous. I don't know if I can get this to go back or not. I'm trying my best here, guys. All right, here we go. All right, now, start at the right-hand side. Watch the double team. Boom and boom. You see, that's an excellent job. See how he posted them up? And see how the pin player came from the outside? Boom. Now you see the trap lock. Watch the right tackle come down inside out. I'd like to see him go a little faster. And boom. Nice angle, good inside out. Great job by those three. The center, tough, tough job. He comes down. He basically gets run over. Okay? The left center just get punched and they just throw him to the ground. But look at the left, look at the left guard. Watch the angle that he takes. Watch his setup. Or I mean the left tackle. 
See how he absorbs that guy? That guy never recovers. That's a great job. Watch the wedge. Inside out. Good job by the off returner. You run over the kicker. You don't run out of bounds when the kicker comes up to you. It's not. <laughs> Needless to say, he took a lot of grief when the guys watched this on tape. You don't do that. That's not what we're looking for there. All right, now let's take a look at the other angle. All right, now. Watch the setup of the wedge. See how they're inside out. See how that number three guy tries to head fake and come across inside? He stays with him. The off returner. Watch how smart he is. He takes the guy and the left in switches responsibility. I have a question. Yes, sir. Is that a blindside? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We've been running this return all year. You know he was coached up that this was going to happen. You know what? I don't feel sorry for guys. They knew this was coming. He knew that was coming, and he didn't. And he didn't see it. Now he shouldn't do that, obviously. Yeah. But I. So he got the wrong angle. And he should have been there sooner. I guess they felt his head was in front. It's such a good hit, they probably just let it go. Look at the guy lead up through. Great job. Watch the guy 22. Watch him lead up through and look inside. That's a good block. That's how it's supposed to go, just like that. Now look at this double team. Watch the double team. They get contact. Watch that double team. Now that's a double team. And the returner should not have done that. He should have, he should have cut back and tried to make him miss. We have a saying in the U.S., when you get a guy doubled like that, you put a quarter in the machine because you're going for a ride. <laughs> and that's exactly what he did. They're going to block that guy all week long. Okay. This, this I'm just going to spend one second on. When you have success, you're, you're, you're all on kickoff. This just happened to you. Your next reaction as a coach is, well, don't kick it deep. We won't kick it to him deep. We'll kick it short. Okay? And this is the answer for when they kick it short. It's called mortar adjust. Mortar, uh, you know, I don't know where they came up. It's really a sky kick. But as soon as that happens, they all start screaming. Mortar, mortar, mortar. That tells everybody now. You block three, four. You, you stop dropping and you immediately react and pin those people inside right now. Whoever does not catch the ball goes and blocks the first two threats on the side. They could kick it to your right end. They could kick it to the up back. They could kick it to the off returner. Any one of those guys could catch that kick. But the reaction has to be block the first threat. Protect your buddy. Block the first threat over here. Whoever shows up first, the two or the one, kick him out. You can miss him, but he's got to go outside. He cannot get inside. We pin, we kick out, we hit it up through. And that's just something you got to practice. Because if you have success, you're going to have to do this because they're not going to kick the ball deep to you. You're not going to kick, they're not going to do it. They'll squib it, they'll, they'll kick it high over to a corner. And if this happened to the left, the same thing would happen to the left. You scream mortar, mortar, mortar. I go to, I pin three, I pin four, I pin five, five, four, three, and hit it. That's just, that's uh, just something that you have to have in your hip pocket to make sure you can do. All right, this is a really good one right here. All right, they kick, we have this going to the left now. Let's see if I can get this. He's gone. That, that guy right there has, has high level speed. Watch the double team. I don't like the double team. What did the, what did the left guard do? Uh, do? He got there way too soon. See, he's trying to knock that guy's head off. I think that's the same guy that got that trap block on the play before. We moved him around. Post and pin, but watch the guy with the pin. See how he stays with it? That's excellent. That's what I'm talking about when I'm saying playing with effort, playing with tough. You just think you're going to miss things. You're going to Things aren't going to go right. Stay with it. That's a great job of staying with it. He gets that scene. All right, watch the trap block. That's not a great block at all, is it? Kind of half misses him. But he gets it just enough. He's gone. Now, the other thing with returners. This is everything. This, to me, is everything. And I, and I'll, I'll, 
I want to make sure I make this point. Punt return and kickoff returns about the returner. If you have an explosive, elusive guy, everything we do as coaches is to put players in a position so they can be successful. Well, this is putting a player who's explosive in position to be successful. He's fast. He doesn't need a lot of space. But you've got to have the willingness to hit. You just can't be a fast guy. You've got to have the nerve to run it up in there. Okay? You've got to have that. If you find that, you, you need to run these, this type of return because this, it fits their skill set. Punt returner. If you have a guy on your team that has great athleticism, make you miss. Run the punt return I'm going to get to here in a minute. Now, this guy had one return for the whole year. This is Bradley Street from Alabama State. I coach at Alabama State, a historical black school in the South. And this is the only turn he had all season because he was a starting safety and the head coach and everybody didn't want to put him on kickoff return. I understand that. I respect that. But just to let him know what he could have done all year, I, I put his ass out there and he ran one for a touchdown. So <laughs> just to make sure they understood what they were missing all year. But watch again. Watch the angle of the wedge. That's perfect. That is absolutely, exactly, those aren't great blocks. They make them go, we're taking them where we want them to go. And that trap block, that five, that's not any good, but it's good enough. Because this guy can fly. Just get, just get the angle and kick him out. Get him a seam and get out of the way. There's guys on the backside aren't even doing close to uh, doing what they're supposed to do. Anybody here ever heard of Alabama State before? Okay, so you know what I'm talking about with some of these guys over here running around. Some of these cats, they have no idea what's going on. No idea. But that number six, that, that guy's fast. Here's the other thing, now, just for pure entertainment value, are you supposed to leave the sideline and, without a helmet? No. Oh, if they cut it off, it's a shame. We have half our sideline go down there, run down there. We got two penalties, not one, we got two. These guys lose their mind. I hope they show it. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. They probably cut it out. Okay, they cut it out. Thank goodness. <laughs> but that's you see, the concept. To me, it's, the, it's tiny. It's not getting great. You can't, no one's good enough to block a long period of time on kickoff return. Nobody. Not in the NFL, not in college, not in high school. If you've got to hit it and you've got to get angles, you need to take them where you want them to go and not where they want to go. Just widen it, get a crease, hit it, and go. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go quickly through some things here because uh, I really want to, uh, onside, I, I, that's just the rules we have, how we do onside. It probably happens more for us in the, in the U.S. than you guys see it. I'm not going to spend much time on that. Pump return. This is what I want to spend some time on. This is good stuff right here. This is things that I think you can use that will apply and you can be successful using. Punt return, the most important thing on punt return, when it plays over, our offense jogs out on the field. Cannot have a penalty, cannot have a turnover, cannot have a drop kick, punt, you can't have, you've got to put the offense on the field when that's over. Critical. That's a starting point. Now, this is some of the things that we've done. The other thing is, there can't be a fake. You must have a system in place that makes sure that all the eligible receivers are covered, that if the guy goes back and takes it and runs back to pass, you've got people covered. And those rules are what we use. The corners always cover one, the safeties always cover the second eligible, and the inside linebacker always covers the third eligible. In our scheme of cover one, man to man, that's how we do it. And that's pretty standard all across the US, that's everybody. It's simple, it carries over from defense. The guys on the field are defensive players, they know what you're talking about. Hey, it's like man coverage. Okay, coach, I got it. We can put, you can put this in in a week and have this work. You see those? Uh, well, let me get to the next thing here. And, all right, other formations. There they are. Same thing, other formation. There's contained rushers, and you got to cover. All right, now, this. You guys going to help me out in this? Did we talk earlier? Let's go. All right, just pop up here. Hop up here. All right, now, this. You can teach this, you can get this done in a very short period of time. This is not complicated, all right? These are the three levels of drills that you do to teach punt return. All right, uh, why don't you two guys go against each other because then I can, I can talk. 
All right, one guy's on offense, one guy's on defense. He's holding up this player. There's three phases. There's on the line hold up. He comes off the ball. This guy's got to block him because he's responsible to block him on the punt. Your punt, you can't get a punt block. So he does his kick slide. He gets his hands into him. Boom, and he grabs him. And now it's on the line hold up. Once you get your hands on him, you sink your hips. You widen your base. Widen, 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 widen. And now he tries to go, and you just try to move your feet and stay with him. That's all you're trying to do. That's good. The more time he spends on the line is less time he spends down the field getting in your returner's face. This guy's a good player. He's going to naturally get by him. As he gets by him, now he's going to go to what we call harass and trail. And I wish you could all have this happen to you. If you're running and you're going down the field and you're hand fighting, you kind of get your hands on him, you're stopping him, and it really doesn't bother him a whole lot. This guy's usually pretty strong and he can go down the field. But as he's going down the field, let me do this one so I'm sure this can take, go down the field, go ahead. He goes this way, and I take my hand and I hit his hip. Your gait has no base, because you're running. So you always have only one foot on the ground. So if someone hits your base, you can widen him. And that's what we're trying to do. Get our hands on him and widen him. It's called harass and trail. I harass him, all right, and I'm trailing, and I push him. Again, we're giving this guy credit for being better than us. He gets in front of me. He's beat me. He's trying to get into the returner. I take an angle. Stop right there, please. I take an angle to cut him off. It's called midpoint. And as he goes to turn in, I just go and block him out, just like I'm playing basketball. Line of scrimmage hold up. Harass and trail. Midline cutoff. All right? Now, we do this. Go ahead. Thanks, guys. We do this so fast at practice and keep everybody involved and get it going, and they're only going five yard increments. Line of scrimmage hold up is five yards. I blow the whistle, these two are up. Shh, blow the whistle, two more guys up. I blow the whistle, two more guys are up, we go. Harass and trail, they get lined up. You two are up, go, boom, you two are up, go. You two are up, go, thank you. Down the field, midpoint cutoff. He goes, boom, he goes, boom. You keep a lot of people involved, you have fast paced practice, and you're not running them into the ground. Very, very good thing to do. See those three drills right there. I want to make sure we look at the film, and I want to make sure we get to this. I'm not going to spend any time on this. In 2009, I was with the Philadelphia Eagles, and I got a chance to coach Deshaun Jackson. And I, you may not have heard of him, but I'm just telling you, this guy was as good a returner as you're ever going to see. He led the NFL in punt returns in 2009, had a great NFL career. He's a terrific athlete. And we did all these same drills with him and implemented these drills with him and Ball, so he got comfortable with what we were doing, and we just, the guys played great. The guys just did a great job. But I believe in these drills. This is just how we align in the NFL. That, that has nothing to do with, with what's uh, going on today here. We're six box, seven box, even an odd. This right here, if you listen to nothing that I've said the entire day, take this with you. I assume that most people here see the college spread type of punt with the shield. I'm making that assumption. Is that true? Okay, this is how you attack it. The left end, the nose guard, and the right end are defensive linemen. They're backups. Let's put a backup guy in there. The good thing they'll do is they understand that left end knows he's got to contain the, the punt. So he'll do that. You don't have to coach him. Spend one minute on it. Hey, you're rushing, you're containing it. Got it. Do it all day. Nose guard, get over the center, go straight ahead. Try to run over somebody when you get in there. That's what nose guards do. Right end, go through the outside shoulder of that guy. Press him, contain all right? Now, the Mike linebackers, your backup Mike linebacker, doesn't have to be a starter. He's covering the middle guy in that, in that shield. He's going to slow pedal out, make sure it's not a fake, sees the ball punted, stops, turns 10 yards in front of the returner, and takes the first threat. Just gets his hands on him. You don't have to knock him down. You don't have to do anything. Just get your hands on him and shield him. Just shield him. The two safeties need to be pretty good players. And they should be safeties, because this is what safety does all day. They line up over number two, they're going to slow pedal out, check the fake, ball's punted. I turn and open up to the outside, get 10 yards in front of the returner, and I'm going to block the first threat to the right-hand side. <coughs> the left safety does the exact same thing, first threat to the left-hand side. Okay, simple, simple. The left end and the right end, they want to go through, jump up here so I can show them the technique that, that uh, this is really important. Right there's fine. If I'm rushing here and he's got to block me, 
Because he's supposed to, I'm, I'm going to go block the punt unless he blocks me. So I come flying off the ball, he blocks me. Boom, my hands go here and I press, I press, I press. I make sure the ball's not uh, being punted. He's going to go release. I've done my job. I've occupied him. I've stopped him from getting down the field quickly. Because that gunner, the wide guy, you guys all put your best players at those wide guys. So they can get down and get in the return space. We're going to double team those guys. The corner is going to use the same technique that you teach all day, that he does all day, man-to-man -man coverage. Whatever that technique is that you teach, have him do that. Do not open your hips on the snap and turn and run because you've not affected his release. Do something that you can do, moving your feet, lateral, or baby step out to where you can get your hands on. We're assuming he's better than you. He just beat you down the field. That left safety is back and is going to pick him up, absorb him, and take him to the outside. Everything we're trying to do is widen the coverage team and hit it vertically. The right safety is doing the same thing. We've widened him. Now we're going to hit a vertical seam. Okay? Now let's take a look at it. All right, now, again, this is Alabama State, so there's some things going on here that maybe not are perfect. Do not let a talented returner get vertical. Don't do it. Do not. If you let a returner get vertical, you're asking for trouble. You're asking for trouble. All right? Now, some of these techniques are not exactly perfect, but the concept. 43 should be backpedaling out faster. He's got to get his eyes on that guy sooner. That guy beats him. He's not fast enough to him. He doesn't get there fast enough. But what does he do? Watch him. Watch him what he does. He gets the next guy. And it's not great. But once again, you cannot let a talented returner. See 16 get right in front of him. Watch 16. That's a phenomenal job. That is, and it's, you do not want to try to knock the guy. You absorb him and let the returner make a cut. The right safety in the right corner, they're beat. He doesn't get inside that number three. That's not a good job by those two, and look what happens. If you can get a returner going vertical and watch 56 down the field, he's actually trying to do a hit by. Watch 56, he turns, he sees him, he's just trying to hit by. He's not trying to knock the guy down or get his, he's just trying to get his body on his body in space. And here's the worst thing ever. The punter just tackled the guy. <laughs> what are you thinking? I mean, what are you thinking? How about making a cut? <laughs> right or left? It doesn't matter which way. Poor number 40, he doesn't know what's happening. He, he's just trying to run down there and do something. This guy runs right into the punter. But you can see, to me, it's all about understanding the concept. This is another look. This is the last one I have. I'll let you guys go after this one. But just, you can see, we, here they go. Got the rushers. Got the hold up. Watch out. He got going too fast and, 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 um, and fell down. But... When you got a guy back there that can make people miss, give him a chance. Just give him a chance. Just get a body out of body and let him do what he does. Boom, hit the big man right there. He got the big fella. All right, guys, I really appreciate your time today. And again, I, if there's one thing that you took out of this, you can do that. It's simple, it's easy to teach, and it's effective. Thank you.